Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are on day eight, if you can believe it. And today it is the carnation, one of the most underrated flowers in my opinion. They are absolutely gorgeous and pretty simple to paint. So let's get into it. So the carnation follows a very similar petal pattern as the rose, but the petals on the carnation are really ragged and spontaneous versus smooth like the rose. So like with the rose, we're going to make those same moon half circle shapes and keeping everything tight for the center, but the petals are really ragged. So we're going to do kind of a wiggly motion with our brush to get that effect. And also the petals are really thin and you're not seeing a whole lot of the petal, but more just the edge and a bunch of the layers. And so we can keep our strokes really thin using the point of our brush to achieve that, wiggling everything around. And then of course we do want some of those more open petals. And so that's when we'll put more pressure on our brush to get a more full looking petal. Now I'm going in with a more pigmented pink and really just using the tip of my brush, I'm creating some of those jagged edges. So it's creating definition, but I'm also letting some of that pink really blend in with the petals. So it creates those shadows as well. So this carnation we're finishing is more open and we're kind of looking at it from the side. And I'll show you how to use the greenery to also help with that illusion. And then now I'm creating a carnation that's kind of a bud, but it's more open than a bud. And so it's kind of in that halfway point. So it's not going to have as many layers. They're not going to be quite as open and full, but still we want that wiggly movement and this is about as big as we're going to get it. And again, the greenery on carnations really makes it look like carnations. So once we add that, I'll show you how to make it look like this one is more closed off and the one on the top is more full. And I'm just balancing out the composition by adding another carnation here. And this one's going to be more full as well. So again, the way that you make those fuller petals is you do a more broad stroke, but then you go along the edge and kind of do that wiggly motion, adding those details and even making sure there's white space around those little wiggly lines really helps us to see that this is a really um, wavy petal and it's not quite like a rose because we can see lots of layers of these wiggly lines. So now really it could technically be a variety of rows at this point, but when we add this specific greenery that is very specific to carnations, that's when everything starts to come together. So carnations have a really thick kind of bell shaped greenery at the, at the stem. So when the carnation is more of this bud shape here on the left, it's really big. The greenery is just a very big bell shape, but on the, the other flowers, the greenery is more covered and so their bell shapes are going to be smaller. But again, it's that signature little green stump that lets people know that what you've painted is actually a carnation. So after you paint their upside down green bell shape, they come together. They're kind of weedy um, in the way that they are attached to each other. Their leaves are really thin and grassy. You'll see in a second. They have these kind of little pokies that come out and kind of look grassy around the edges. So I'd created some of that, but then their leaves just kind of look like these long grassy stems. So for those grassy leaves, I'm just making a quick stroke with my brush and doing pretty even pressure throughout to get just that long, even grassy leaf. And then here on this little stem I created, I'm doing just a little tiny green hint of a bud to fill this little gap down here. And then once everything is placed, I mess around still with more details. So adding some more of these grassy leaves and little pokies, I want to add dimension into the greenery. So with a darker pigment of green, I'm going in and adding kind of like a little shadow at the base of these green bells. I'm also going to add what I call companion leaves. And this is where I add a darker contrasting leaf right next to a lighter leaf I've already created and maybe that's not how the flower actually looks but it looks really good in a painting. <laughs> Whenever you can go back into a painting and add just a little bit of a darker contrast your painting will suddenly pop and come way more to life. 
And once everything was finished and I was looking at it, I decided that the flowers needed another light, fluffy petal coming off the side, and I think it really helped the composition. And now my favorite part is when we get to add it to our watercolor flower guide. And for this carnation, I wanted to make sure I had enough space to do that big, beautiful green bell shape that is really characteristic of the carnation so that we know that's what we painted here. And thank you for being here today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial for the carnation and I can't wait to see you tomorrow for day nine. I can't believe how fast it is going. I have really enjoyed this entire process and I hope you enjoyed painting a carnation with me today. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.